Hi, I'm David Brochard, and I'm a scientific software developer at Quantstack. I work on various projects in the Jupyter ecosystem, including Jupyter Client, NB Client, Voila, and some widgets such as uh, IPy Leaflet. I also work on Extensor, which is an, uh, an array computing library written in C++. Howdy, my name is Sylvain Corlet. I am the founder and CEO of Quantstack. As an open source developer, I mostly work in the Jupyter ecosystem. I'm the co-creator of Voila Dashboards, an extensor, and a core team member for CandaForge. I do a lot of volunteer work for the community as a board member for NumFocus and the organizer of PyData Paris. Everybody loves notebooks, from researchers and students for communicating their work to teachers for the ability to explain things interactively to their audience. Well, everybody expect your manager because they are non-technical people they don't know what code is. They hate code. Actually, they don't want to execute your notebook. They may not even have an execution environment to do so. So notebooks are for developers to share their work with other developers. Results are interleaved with code and the code is here to show how the result was produced, but it's also here for you to modify it in order to see how it affects the, the results. Actually, this is a big safety issue because it means that the user can run an arbitrary code. So in short, we need something simpler to share our notebooks with non-technical people. To tackle all of these issues, we decided to make Voila. Voila is a tool that lets you turn any notebook into a standalone secure web application. So you may wonder if we didn't have that already before with tools such as NB Viewer or NB Convert. And it's true that you can use NB Convert to produce an HTML document from a notebook and then serve it on the internet. But it will only be a static document and the user won't have the ability to interact with your web page. So what really makes Voila special is its support for widgets, such as IPy widgets for the Python language. You can really see widget as code masqueraded into a GUI. For example, the user can move a slider which will uh, trigger some code in the kernel, but the creator of the dashboard has complete control over what is exposed to the user, and thus the user can't run any arbitrary code, which fixes the safety issue that we mentioned earlier. Today, we're proud to present you the Voila project. Voila turns Jupyter Notebooks into standalone web applications. So getting Voila is really easy. You can just install it from pip by typing pip install Voila. And it's also available in CandaForge. And you can get it with Mamba using with Mamba install Voila dash C CandaForge to specify the channel. And the simplest way to try it out is just to open a terminal and type Voila notebook.ipnb should you have a notebook named that way. So let's try it out. So here we have a notebook open in JupyterLab in which we have a couple of widgets and a slider and a text box. And whenever we move the slider, the text box will show the square of the value of the slider. And so whenever I move the slider, there is some kind of round trip to the kernel being done, right? Now let's check out the same notebook with Voila by typing Voila basics that type NB, turning all the cells and actually showing all the outputs of the notebook, the rich display of the table, and the widgets are live. It just works. Now we can also explore some of the first command line options. For example, should we type voila basics that type in B, selecting the theme with theme equal dark, and deciding to not strip the sources from the resulting application, you get another style, which is Basically, the Jupyter Lab style with the dark theme and all of the code inputs still displayed. Another way to try out Voila if you are a user of Jupyter Lab is with the Voila Jupyter Lab preview. So, for example, here we are exploring the same notebook and clicking on the Voila button, we have a preview of what it would look like should you open the app in Voila. Well, let's try it with another kernel, right? 
So one kernel that is really dear to us is the C++ kernel. And in this example here, I am showing that you can run Voila with a notebook that is not a Python notebook, but for example, a C++ notebook. That one notebook here takes a bit more time to execute because it needs to be compiled before running. But, well, we should get to it before a few, a few more seconds. And you will see that we showed a C++ notebook, not stripping the code source, displaying a leaflet map in line. And whenever we draw something on the map, here I'm just going over the contour of the France country, where the action that was done is actually displayed in line in, the, in the Jupyter notebook. So voila, in a nutshell, voila support Jupyter Interactive widgets. It remains fully functional even when they require computation by the kernel. It does not permit arbitrary code execution by consumer of dashboards. It is built upon Jupyter protocols and file formats by communicating with the kernels, opening notebooks, and it works with any kernel. So it makes it a completely language agnostic dashboarding system, which is very unique. So for example, we can use Voila in combination with Juice Clean to make a C++-based application. How does it work? This slide shows Voila's execution model, with the backend represented on the left and the frontend on the right. When you enter the notebook URL in the browser, it sends an HTTP GET request to the server, which opens the notebook and launches an associated kernel. It then runs all the notebook cells and populates all the cell outputs. It also applies a Voila template in order to convert the notebook into an HTML document, which is sent over back to the front end where it is rendered. The kernel remains alive in the back end. The HTML document also contains some JavaScript code, which will open a connection, a WebSocket connection to the kernel in the back end. And this is the mechanism which will allow widgets in the front end to execute code in the back end. We want to emphasize how Voila really leverages the Jupyter ecosystem. Although it's a completely new application, under the hood, it really just rearranges Jupyter's core components. It uses the same format, notebook format, which is a well-specified JSON component. For the execution, we use nbclient and nbconvert for the HTML rendering. JupyterLab components and widgets are used in the front end. And in the back end, we use the Jupyter server, kernels, and also widgets. And all these components are rearranged into a new product which is secure by design because the code stays in the backend and never reaches the user. It also doesn't have to look like a notebook. Thanks to templates, you can create completely custom layouts. When showing a Voila dashboard, the HTML served to the end user is actually produced from a, from a notebook model applying an NB convert template. Voila lets users pick the template to be used with the dash dash template command line argument. For example, voila notebook.ipnb dash dash template equal classic will render the notebook using the classic and be convert template, which produces the same DOM structure as the classic notebook. In fact, the template system can be used to completely override the behavior of the front end. For example, let's check out the grid stack template. The Voila grid stack template can be easily installed from pip by typing pip install grid stack. It is also available on Carnaforge and can be easily installed with Mamba by typing Mamba install Voila grid stack dash C Carnaforge. Now let's try it out. I actually have a notebook called Scotch Dashboard and I can run it in Voila typing Voila Scotch Dashboard dash dash template equal grid stack. Let's dive into the grid stack template. So I'm currently in a terminal. And if I inspect the current working directory, I see that there is a Scotch dashboard notebook. So if we open the notebook, what we find is a bunch of code cells that may not be interesting to your manager. 
And in the very end, some interesting content, a table, a line chart, and a dropdown. And in the dropdown, you get to select a different brand of scotch and see the table and the line chart update whenever you pick a new version. So this application lets the user pick a scotch brand and see how much of body or sweetness that scotch brand has, right? Unfortunately, this format is not the best one to communicate to a general audience because they need to run the code. The most interesting content is in the end. We are in a very typical case of a notebook that you would like to share. So let's run this with voila. Voila, scotch dashboard, dash dash template. And now we're going to use the grid stack template. So voila runs the source, displays the template. And I see the same content, the table, the drop down, the, the markdown source, and the line chart, which is still dynamic. So whenever I change the value in the drop down, there is a round trip to the kernel done and that updates the line chart. Fantastic. But how come I'm not getting the same layout as in the classic notebook? The reason is that in the Voila grid stack template, the layout is encoded into the cell metadata and we use a grid stack JS library to, encode, to render that encoded layout. So this is a really powerful tool to actually rearrange the notebook and look it into a different way. How can we make it so that, for example, I can edit this layout? When you install the Voila grid stack template, you also get your classic notebook extension, which is a layout editor, and which provide hand, provides handles for each one of the cells and lets you rearrange the positions of the different outputs in the layout of the final dashboard. Whenever you save that notebook, the metadata gets saved together with the content of the source. And if you run this notebook into Voila, you will see the same content. So I think we should give credit to the Jupyter Dashboards project, which is now deprecated, but offered this feature earlier than Voila. And Basically, we recreated the Jupyter Dashboards project using the Voila grid stack template. So I think this is a really good illustration that Voila templates can completely override the behavior of the front end and give a lot of flexibility for users or companies who want to brand their notebooks or provide custom styling to do pretty much whatever they want and offer a means to look at the notebook with a different pair of glasses. So let's dive a bit deeper into Voila templates. So actually a template is not just a Jinja template. It's a directory placed into the standard folder prefix shared Jupyter Voila templates. And you may have multiple installed there. So what's in this directory? Obviously the Jinja templates that we use to render the HTML, but sometimes static resources like CSS or JavaScript and custom tornado templates. All of these files are optional, and most of the times you also have a conf.json configuration file, which, which actually specifies what is the base template that we are inheriting from. Since templates really are only static files to be installed in, the, in a data directory, they are very easy to package. As a PyPy package or a Kanda package, it is very easy to produce a template in a standard you know, Python module and distribute it with the package manager. Another project built upon Voila that I wanted to feature here is the Voila Gallery. Voila Gallery is a plugin for TLJH, the Little House Jupyter Hub, which provides a page listed all available Voila templates to all of the Hub users. The source for the project can be found in the Voila Dashboards organization. TLJH Voila Gallery is a simple means to share Voila Dashboards within the users of a JupyterHub instance. There are many other deployment scenarios documented in the Voila documentation. For example, you can de de deploy Voila dashboards on Heroku, on the top of Binder, and 
pretty much anywhere. So check it out. So why should you use Voila? Let's first mention that there is virtually no learning curve because a notebook is a dashboard. What we mean by that is that everything that works in a notebook will also work in Voila. You can take any notebook out there and potentially convert it into a dashboard. Voila is also language agnostic and there are kernels available for all major programming languages including Python, C++, Julia and R. Unlike some other solutions, there is also a clean separation between the content and the layout. The content is stored in the standard notebook format and the template system is used to create custom layouts. So what about the future? We have a very ambitious roadmap for Voila. First, one of our priorities for next year is to make Voila use the new JupyterLab module federation system. By using the same extension system as JupyterLab, this will enable all notebook output, type, output types to be rendered in the Voila dashboards, such as rich map time renderers, bokeh, and this will allow us to fulfill the contract that if it works in the notebook, it's going to work in Voila. Another thing that we're really excited about is to actually compile C++ notebooks into standalone binary that can use, be used as a backend to Voila so that we don't actually need a C++ interpreter anymore when using the Voila dashboard with the C++ kernel. Another thing that's really important to us is to integrate the Voila preview extension in JupyterLab with the JupyterLab visual debugger so that you can run such notebooks in debug mode. We're also working on the ability to use a pool of forked processes for kernels to reduce launch time and better scale Voila applications. And finally, the Voila grid stack template will soon include a Voila layout editor for JupyterLab. <laughs>